Hello, y'all. It is 11 o'clock, my time. Um, this is, I'm LaDawn Wooten with LaDawn's Recreations. Uh, hey, Gwen um, and Christy. Okay, I, let me get my computer up here. I always have to refresh after I hit, hit the live button. Okay, um, I just wanna say hey, y'all. Um, I'm, thank you for joining me today. Uh, Gwen, I'm glad you're on here because I saw that you had asked me a question earlier and this is hopefully gonna answer your question. Um, so I, I just didn't have time to get on there. Um, today I want to, I've been, um, haven't been on the last two weeks, just a little um, transparency here. Uh, Last week, our store, well, uh, on Friday, the store where I had my booth opened, uh, that reopened, and so I spent last week, along with a lot of other, other vendors in the store, cleaning and restocking and cleaning and disinfecting and cleaning and restocking, and um, so I just didn't even get on here. So um, I've had, I've tr I, my whole thing on this, I really want to help people. I'd love to do that. But I just don't always know content, how, what to, I know I just don't want to get on here and just rattle and ramble. So I like to have content to provide you, and sometimes that's hard to come up with. Um, if you've done lives, you, you totally understand that. So, but I have had a number of people ask me about the um, water vinegar, half and half water vinegar mix that I do, and, um, and about the Dixie Mud. So I just thought, you know what, I think I can do that in a little video or a little live um, mainly I do it on my furniture and it's really hard to show on furniture because um, it's it is such a wet and messy uh, process so um, it's hard to you can't dry in between steps you've got to literally do steps and walk away so I thought well I'm going to show you on some chipboard and about or two years ago uh, I'm, a Dix I'm a Dixie Bell retailer and two years ago, uh, we always have a uh, workshop every year for all the retailers in Florida. Uh, Dixie Bell is a family-owned and operated company, and they are, uh, they are uh, out of uh, Lutz, Florida, so right out of side of Tampa. And I got the privilege to uh, teach at that work uh, two years ago at the workshop. And what I did was, I, we, it, was it was labeled, the, uh, the class was Playing with Mud. So Dixie Bell has a product called Dixie Mud. It comes in three different flavors, not really. It comes in three different colors, um, and it is just such a fun product. Uh, you can, a lot of people use it for repairs. If you've got a crack in a piece of furniture, it's, uh, they use that instead of wood filler. Um, you can just use it for texture. You can use it, I love to use it through a raised stencil, so that's the majority of what I use it for. Um, it is a soft product, so it's softer than uh, wood filler, but it dries just as, it, when it dries, it, it's, it is still powdery. Well, when it dries, if you sand it, it's powdery. It is a water-based product, so if you apply water straight onto it, it will start to dissolve. So the key is to use it, sand back just slightly to just uh, get off the rough spots from it, and then apply either a top coat or paint on top of it, and when you do, it will be hard as a rock. And so it just needs that sealer on top of it to seal it and cause it to be hard. So I use it a lot on my furniture. If I've got pieces that are just plain, not a whole lot of character to them, uh, I, then I will apply a, a, a stencil over my furniture, use this mud, and I'll show you how in a minute, um, and then I go out my painting. And so a lot of times, I, li I like it really raised. So sometimes I will double raise it, which means I put it on, and, I, um, and then I let it dry, and then I'll put my stencil back over that again, and I'll use the mud on top of that again so that it's even more raised. And then if there's any peaks, I like those, but some people don't, so you can lightly just sand those peaks back, and then you're, you're uh, ready to go after it's dry, ready to start painting. So anyway, um, because I'm doing this reverse the way I normally do it, because I want you to see what I'm doing, I want you to see it upside down, and it's hard for me also to do some of this because um, I want it to stand up and we'll show you. So I'm up close and personal. 
um, but I'm gonna adjust this and um, I will do my best. Again, I'm terrible about um, questions because it's just so hard to see the questions as because they roll so fast. So um, if any of my Dixie Bell retailer friends or Brandon Baster, Le Leah, hey, Brandon Baster, I'm glad that you're on here too. Uh, she is a wealth of knowledge. So if you will help me maybe answer questions if you see them fly by. If not, at the end of this, I will go back and I will answer every question, I promise, okay? All right, Whew. Uh, let's get started, okay? All right, bring it in. This is what, uh, this is uh, what I wanna show you, and this is kind of where I'm going with this. This has uh, got some different facets, different pieces or processes to it but this is what I try to go for. And every time I do it, it's completely different. So it will never be exactly the same. So that's what I love about all this. So, okay, but anyway, I'm gonna show you. That's, this is, you know, you can turn it however, want, however much you want to. So there's, um, that's what we're going for, okay? Oh, and also, just before I forget, I know I'll forget. Um, I am getting a, um, I'm fixing to expand my booth. Uh, at Old Town Village in Waxhatchee. That's where I sell my paint, sell Dixieville paint and where I sell my furniture. And um, I'm gonna, in June 1, I'm gonna expand into another, an, an additional booth. And so there's walls in that booth. And so I'm gonna use this technique on some of the walls. And this is kind of my idea. But again, this, this, this mud is very textured. So I have a, a um, I forgot to turn off my text messages. So sorry, y'all. Um, I have a stencil, and I'm just going to run this. I'm going to. This is kind of what I'm going to do on my wall, and this. And I'll, I'll probably add color, I'm sure. But I did the stencil on this, but I also just used the mud just to create what looks like maybe a, a paint that's kind of worn off. But anyway, that's kind of my that's kind of my idea. And I was going to show you this at the end, but I know me. I, I'm another transparency thing. I am majorly ADD. And, uh, and I really try to control it. But when I get excited, I talk fast, and I just sometimes miss, uh, miscommunicate or miss say things. So uh, my brain works way faster than my mouth. So if my mouth is working fast, you know my brain's going even more. So just forgive me for that. I just ask for grace. So, okay, well, let's get started. All right. This is, hold it up. This is one of my most favorite stencils. This is a Dixie Bell stencil. Again, you can get stencils any and everywhere. I mean, you can get them at, of course you know this, um, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart, uh, Amazon. But anyway, this is a Dixie Bell um, stencil and it's called the Floral Oval. Uh, once again, I do, I've not figured out how to turn this around. But anyway, it's Floral Oval. This is what it looks like. I use this on a lot of the pieces of my furniture. I love to, um, put this on and if I and then I will put the knob through here so that it comes out so if you go and look at my Facebook page you'll see this stencil used quite often so okay and just to show you this and this is a kind of a good practice if you um, just want to want to practice on this technique before you go put it on furniture these are chipboards it's just thicker chipboards I got a whole stack of these at a Hobby Lobby and this is a 12 by 12. So they're great practice boards, but they're also great to just, if you wanna do art on them. They're thick, uh, so they'll hold up to some water. They'll hold up pretty well. They will maybe, you know, um, get a little warped, but you can easily, they're very, they are flexible also. So, okay. So a lot of times I will tape down my stencil, but uh, this is pretty much a, tw this is a 12 by 12 stencil with a 12 by 12, um, chipboard. So Dixie Mud uh, comes in three colors. It comes in black, which is really kind of a char dark charcoal color, and there's brown, and there's white. And the, the, these are some older ones that I used. They used to make 16s and 8 ounces. Now they only make them in 8 ounces. Um, there is a, uh, back when they first started making this product, they started finding out that there was mold issue. Mold, some, some of them would be moldy, you know, create mold inside because there's so much moisture inside. It's a water-based product. So um, after they realized that, they started adding in a mold inhibitor in there. So that has helped a lot. Sorry, y'all, my nose is itching. Um, 
um, that helped a lot with the mold. But it, we always tell our customers it's a good idea to put it in the refrigerator and put a label on it. I always put my, I put labels on the top of mine. This label is make sure you do not wash this down your drain because um, it could clog your drain. So you just want to clean your stencils, clean your your um, application tools with baby wipes, paper towel, water. Just don't put it down the drain, okay? I'm sure somebody tried it, and that's why they had to say that. But anyway, I put that on. I don't have to worry about my husband, you know, getting into it. It does, you know, the brown one does kind of look like Nutrella. But um, anyway, I, I do like it in the refrigerator because when it comes out, it ha it's, a, it's a little thicker consistency. So, but then a lot of people like it, you know, with a little looser consistency. So it's totally your preference. If you, if you left it out for a day, it's not going to get moldy. But if you left it out, maybe, and depending on your climate, it may, you know, it may have, have a little bit of mold inside. I don't, I, I haven't had that issue with the new pro, the newest 8-ounce products, but it's just always a precaution. So that's just a good, those are some good tips uh, about that. So, um, again, just it depends on your climate, whether you really want to do that or not. So anyway, but it doesn't hurt either way. I mean, I keep mine in the refrigerator. Um, but if I'm going to use it, you know, over on a project, I usually sometimes will leave it out for a day or so. Okay, so I'm going to use, and it really doesn't matter because to me, I, I usually use the brown or the black, but I'm going to paint over it. But if you're going to use like a, a do paint in a, with a, a neutral colors on your piece, you could use the white and then maybe have a little bit less paint, you know. I mean, you won't have to worry about anything showing through the brown or the black, but usually the pieces that I do are distressed and rusty, crusty, gro you know, um, grungy. So I really like the darker colors. So anyway, I'm going to use the black. And I know that was a lot of preliminary FYI, but you, I think you need to know that when you're working with this product. Okay. You can see it is um, it's thick, but it's, it's still soft. It's still a soft product. So it's easy. It's very easy to work with. I hope that you can see me. Okay. So I just hold mine down. I don't care, for me, I don't care if it gets underneath. Um, I mean, it, it's not going to get really underneath this. But So if you're really concerned about it, you could tape this down and just be more careful. Um, but I, I put a good amount on, and I just slap it in. And to me, the thicker, the better. You can make some peaks with it if you want. Because I've got this on an easel. So I pretty much got it Oh, and you can see how thick yeah, you get there you can kind of tell okay anyway that's how thick it is and you can see all the texture all that oh yummy goodness okay so then I literally just pick up one side each and lift it off okay then I usually will scrape it, this, this off, put it back in my jar. I don't, I'm not concerned about it being, you know, contaminated because it's not. It's not. Um, so anyway, then I just wipe off everything. And I I'll, I'll will take that uh, stencil after I get off here. And then I'll just wipe it back with a baby wipe. So anyway, so okay. So one other thing that, makes my, that people ask me about, I'm trying to give you as much information as I can here. Okay, um, some people will say, well, I don't want uh, black or brown or white uh, mud. Yes, you can add uh, color paint to your mud. Very little, I mean like a drop or two. Because it's so soft and it is a water-based product, it will, it will, and when you put water, more, uh, another type of water-based product in there, it will dilute it and it will change the consistency of it. But, but here's another step, here's another tip. 
We also have a product called Sea Spray. And this is a powder. Um, comes in, it has a little scoop in it. Scoop. And it's just a, it's just a loose, it's a, whoops, there's a loose, it's just a loose powder. And you can put, add that back in with your mud, if it's loose, too loose for you, you can put that in there and it will thicken it back up and make it even thicker. So, um, I do, I have done that and it, it works. So, that's just another, another little tip, okay? Alright, so anyway, so that, so this has got quite a bit of, um, bumps and it's, it's really thick and, and tall. So, I mean, raised. So when this is dry, again, the best thing to do is just very lightly sand back those peaks and then you're, it's ready to paint, okay? So here it is with already, I've got one painted. Let me just put you back down here, okay. So you can see that stencil. And this is um, hard as a rock. It is because I painted it. It's hard. You can't. It it won't you know come off. Um, I painted it with mermaid tail. This is just a really pretty turquoise Dixie Belle color. So this is going to kind of lead into um, how kind of how I do my layers. Uh, I buy these at Kroger. I get like 50 of them in a bag, in a bag, bag for like 50, I mean, for like a dollar. They're, these are great to put your paint in. Okay, so to create some layers, I y'all can see, okay, there we go. Um, to create some layers, I'm just gonna use two more colors. So I've got this right now with Mermaid Tail. And I'm gonna add in some Gulf, which is a lighter color, lighter turquoise, and then some Kudzu. Um, this is just really pretty green. I love these two together, and then this just will be kind of lighten it up. So, and I'm not for sure how this is going to all go because I haven't done this in such a quick little video. I usually sit and play and spend way more time. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Also, when I when I spread in the mud, you can use any. You can use like an old hotel key. Um, gift card key, I mean gift cards, um, little scrunchies, uh, just, it doesn't matter what it is, just as long as you've got something to kind of scrape it on. So these were just another little, um, idea. Okay. Different brushes. That's probably my hard, one of the hardest things to decide is what brush do I want to use? Um, just FYI, a synthetic brush, um, I, just I'm using what I got here. This is a synthetic brush, and it will give you. Um, it's more for blend. It's more for a blended look. Uh, you can. Uh, you don't see brush strokes with these, but with the natural bristle brush, you will see you, br some more brush strokes, and it and it you can get it where it will the paint will literally skip, which is what I like, so that you can see the different layers in between. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use this in a minute, but I'll show you. That's a totally another something. Okay. This is the Dixie Belle Premium Chip Brush. It is a chip brush, um, but it's it's a little thicker than most, most chip brushes. So, But it get, it's un, uneven and because it's natural, so it just kind of gives you that texture, added texture that you want. Um, I usually will spray mine brushes, but in this case, I'm, I'm just not going to because... I, I don't want that smoothness, okay? So I've got about this much paint on there, okay? And I just, it's kind of a flicking, it's hard to describe, but you just go and you just kind of let, let off and it lets you be able to see this underneath color as well as the top color, okay? So I just start and I just kind of flick and it just, I kind of let it do its own thing, but it's kind of a light handed. And this is a lot of, a lot of this is what I do on my furniture. I know lots of people ask me and I don't know how to, I'm terrible at describing things. I, I'm, I'm a visual uh, and I talk with my hands. 
Okay, I kind of like that. This is one thing is you could always do this. Less is more. So you start with this, and if you don't like it, it's just paint. You can just go over it again. You just use an, you just you can dry this. You can you can completely repaint it and start over again. It's just paint. So um, the main thing is just have fun with it because it's just such a freeing thing to be able to just create and play. Okay. So if I'm gonna uh, paper towels. Just to add in another color. I'm trying to clean I don't have any water over here. I'm clean up my brush. Okay, this is some kudzu. So I'm just gonna lightly tap in some kudzu. Maybe kind of offload a little bit. And now I'm just gonna, I don't wanna put too much on here because it's this uh, gulf, the gulf is still wet. So I don't really want it to blend, but I just kinda want it to sit on top of each other. Just to create another layer and another color. On this side, it's pretty much already dry. And if I put too much kudzu, then I just go back in, add a little bit more gulf. And again, if it starts to kind of blend, then you just want to use a heat gun, dry it, and, um, and just keep adding. That's mainly what I do is I'll add a color, let it dry, then add another color, let it dry. But this at least gives you the idea behind this, okay? Okay. Um, oh well, yeah. Um, another thing that I do sometimes while it's doing this is I will add some water or water vinegar to, to just kind of blend those. I'm not blend it, but kind of pull some of it together. This is a Mr. Bottle. I have one for just regular water, and then I have one that has half vinegar, half water. And half vinegar, half water mix causes your paint to pull and separate. So when, it, when the paint is wet, you mist over it, and I'll show you, mist over it, and it causes the paint, you don't wanna do it when it's, you first put it on, you, don't, you want it to start to at least set up just a little bit, but you still want it wet, and you, um, Spray it on and it, see I talk with my hands. Um, it pulls and separates the paint and create this texture in these drips, which are just my absolute favorite thing in the world, okay? So this is not dry, but it's not totally wet. So I'm just gonna, this is, I just pretty much missed it. And I just, it starts to reactivate the paint and start to drip. And normally I'll put just a little heavier on here than what I did with this one, but I just let it start running. Okay, so anyway, there's that. And this is one that I already did, just to show you, okay? It is, um, you can see the kudzu in there and the gulf, and uh, of course then you can see the, the mermaid tail underneath here. Oh, look at those strips. <laughs> um, and this just gives your pieces, it gives your art, it gives your canvases, whatever you're working on, it just gives it an extra depth and dimension. Um, and it doesn't look, it doesn't give it that flat look. There are pieces that absolutely need to have that flat look, but there's also ones that don't. So anyway, if, if this is your thing, it may not be. There are people that say, uh-uh, that is not my thing. Okay, but to each their own, and I'm so thankful that this is my thing. So, um, okay, so this, I spray, I put on there, I did spray quite a bit with water vinegar, and then it really was wet, and so that's when it started to run and drip. So, let me get another. Okay, at this point, you can, again, you can do this however, ever you want to, because it's your, it's, it's your piece, it's your art, it's your, um, it's, it's your thing, so. I like, I love the, the mermaid tail, the gulf, the kudzu, coffee bean, and terracotta. We also have a new, newish color, it's called rusty nail. It's a little darker and has a little more red in it than, than uh, this color, than the terracotta. Um, but for this purpose, I really just kind of wanted that more, little more orangey look. So, these are FIFO bottles, in case anybody's asking, people always ask me this. Um, I, I usually, when I buy Dixie Belle 
for myself, I use, always usually buy the 32 ounces. And, um, and the more you use them, the more it's harder sometimes to get the lids on and off. And I, and I don't like to dip in and dip out. And I don't like to, you know, pour it out and it get all over the lid, the, around the lid. So anyway, I use these. And I literally squirt them. I mean, I just shake it up. It's so funny. Last night I did a quick live on Gator Hide. And I went, went back to watch it. And um, I said literally like 100 times. And I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I don't know why I do that. So I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. So I squirt a little bit of coffee bean. It doesn't take a lot to do this part. And terracotta. You can add other colors too, of course. Okay. So I didn't put a whole lot on there. But, you know, pretty much all I got to have. And for this one, I, you know, I go back and forth. So I, people ask me a lot how, how I decide my brushes. I don't, it's hard to describe why I, why I use, what brushes, why, where, how, I don't know. Um, I've got probably... 50 plus brushes um, over here and there are times when I go to work on a piece and I just think hmm what what finish am I looking for what finish do I want to play with and I just go pick up my brush I pick it up and I, I go over to my piece of furniture and I just I feel it I just I'm a, I'm a feeler I, uh, I know that sounds weird um, I feel when I paint and I just I don't know how to describe it but I just, I take and I just start brushing and I think, ooh, how does that feel? Is that giving me the, the imaginary finish I'm thinking? Is it giving me the feel I'm thinking? I know that just sounds bizarre, but that just helps describe my, my crazy. Okay, but I think I'm going to use, this is a natural bristle brush. This one, again, is a synthetic. Um, I'm going to use this in a minute on something else. I just decided because I can. <laughs> um, this is a paint pixie brush, and um, it has a French, I mean, it has an Italian name to it, but I can't, if, if any of y'all on here know what it's called, I have to look at it always, and, um, and I love, love, love it. Um, but anyway, it's natural bristle. So, I'm going to just dip my brush into my paint, and I'm kind of getting both colors on here. And this is another flicking, but I hold it like this. So I'm holding it like this because I want some longer strokes, not some wider strokes, but some longer strokes. And I've never, uh, I'm, okay. Um, I just flick it down and I, it causes these streaks. And then I'll kind of turn it, dip again, because I want both of those colors on here but I want it kind of random. And if there's too many gaps, I go fill it in. And it's kind of, it's kind of got a rhythm to it. It's just kind of like, uh, da, da, uh. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but. Fortunately, you can go watch this again if you want to do a read the replay to see, get a little closer. But. And then, like I said, you can bring it down however much you want. And then, I always, I put, because I have 50-50 in here, I kind of like to shake it up. I don't know that one's one is the vinegar is heavier than the water, or the water is heavier than the vinegar, and I don't know if it settles. I don't know, but it's just something I always do. So I'm just going to mist it. And the cool thing about these misters, you can also use a sprayer. Um, I get these um, right here for 99 cents at Walmart. They are great. You can adjust the, the spray on them. So that's always an option. That's what I used to use before I used this. This has just got a really fine mist. I mean, you can't even hardly see it. Now, I'm smelling it because it's got vinegar in it. I wish I could smell the smell. But, um, and then I just kind of, see? Oh, I can't wait. I wish I'll, how y'all can see this. So it's starting to run and drip. And this also just kind of gives it the, um, option to kind of blend a little more together so it's not so streaky. 
And if you don't like the drips, you can always wipe them back. You can always pat it, tap it. You can also, if it gets where you want to change it up, you flip it over and let it start running the other direction. And start kind of running back. You can also turn it. Of course, with your furniture, you can't really do this, or I guess you can, but you need to probably, I usually need help doing that. But then it starts to, okay, uh, I just don't, I gotta show y'all this. Okay, I'm gonna, I gotta make, make a total mess. Um, I want you to see how it's pulling and separating, how that vinegar water pulls and separates the paint. And it just, ugh, uh, mm, that's my thing right there. Love that. Let me see. Okay, y'all can see that. Okay. And again, you just kind of keep tilting it until you want it however you want it, or you don't have to tilt it at all. You can just let it go. At this point, you know, once you get it kind of, if you, if you um, think, I really want to do something else, but I want it to stop, you can always use a heat gun. And I'll just do this just for a second. But this gives it also another cool look. Because the heat gun stops it kind of in its tracks. And it, you can kind of manipulate some of the runs, however you want. And if that lets you dry it, then you can go back in and add some more. So at this point, if it were dry, then I could go back in and start kind of, maybe I want some more, you know, terracotta. Then I start kind of flipping it, and I'm going to mess it up at this point, um, if I because it's wet. But I just really wanted you to see this process and just how fun it is, okay? All right. I'm going to move this. And this. Okay. So, I want to show you this. I did a um, real, real quick, like 30 second, probably less, um, YouTube video on this. And it's, it's on my YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel. Um, and this is just a big old galvanized metal pot. And I painted it with coffee bean. And then I did this water vinegar mix. And I used, um, I think I used sandbar on here. And as I put it on, and I'm gonna show you on another little piece. When you put it on, the, you can see the pull and the texture on this. I'm going to kind of flip it around so you can see. It's never the same, and that's what I love, love, love about this. In some places, it really pulls, and it really creates this rough texture, which isn't rough, rough, but it is definitely gives you that texture. And then other places, it doesn't, but that's okay because that's, that's what's so cool about it. And then like over here, it really took and ran and I probably this probably was a little more wet when I sprayed it than it was over here so the, the wetter your paint is it's gonna it's gonna start to drag it down and almost remove it versus if it starts to get just a little bit tacky and set up then you spray it it's gonna adhere and then start to pull and separate but again it just gives it just a different look so then when this was all dry I flipped it over and I did my coffee bean because I didn't want, I didn't, for this piece, I didn't want all the drips. I took my coffee bean upside down and I did, and I just flicked it back into this. This was dry at this point and I just took and flicked it so that it gave it that look. So when you look at it, you don't know, hmm, did this run into this or did this run into this? Again, I love to have that um, question. People ask the question, hmm, how did that, how did that get like that? So anyway, that's what I'm gonna show you, okay? So I have this little base. It is, um, I made a mess. Um, it is glass. In fact, it was kind of like an orange glass. Um, I didn't really like the orange, so I put Slick Stick on this, and we have a product called Slick Stick. Um, it's, you can put it on anything that is glass, plastic, laminate, 
anything that's shiny and that does not is not porous because paint wants to stick needs to stick to something porous otherwise it will just slide right off or you know come off um, I know people that have been able to make it work but for me I just like this I really like the slick stick so yeah I put slick stick on here for uh, about 24 hours and I'll let it dry for about 24 hours and then you literally cannot scrape scrape it off and then I put um, coffee bean on top of it yesterday just so that I want so I can kind of show you that same technique um, I'm thinking I'm gonna turn it over and I've got a lazy Susan board that my husband made me so it's easier to do this on I think okay so I'm going to plate okay I'm gonna this is sandbar it's a uh, it's an off-white um, hmm, or it's a neutral um, it's got a, a kind of a brown undertone to it really pretty and it's like sand you know it's like sandbar okay so I think I'm going to dampen my brush because I kind of want it to be a little more solid it's a good thing to you know, just so Dixieville paint just goes on really good, especially when it's um, moved in it brushes stamp. So I put on, you know, so much. Again, less is more. I usually like to start out with less and then just add more as I need it. All this over. So I'm just going to take and brush it down. I can see. So it's kind of thick, but yet it hit down here at the bottom, it starts to kind of fade out, fade back. And when the thick starts to um, tack up, uh, that's when is the water vinegar really starts to work well and do its thing. Depending on what I'm working on, like again, sometimes I will do it like this, use my brush, and it gives this just a little different brush stroke. This kind of, doing it this way, doesn't get as much paint on there. I am a light-handed painter, but again, this process tends to work, especially on like vases or things like that, it tends to work um, better when it's thick, more, or more heavy-handed. You don't want it, you don't want it globbed, but Gives you the that gives you the idea and then you can see but when you start spraying it all those brush strokes are going to kind of change so okay here we go so I'm just going to take and mist You can start to see where it's starting to pull, and the, and like oh, like right in there. No, the hardest part is to go. When do I stop? And only you can answer that question. Um, as long as the paint is wet, it's going to start to pull. But you just have to. Um, 
You just kind of got to kind of look at it and see what see what's happening and see what it's doing. It has a mind of its own, uh, which is awesome. Um, and it looks like it will create the drips and the runs. And then now it's starting to it it's it's kind of be hard to tell, but it's starting to pull. And I'm just going to kind of mist and hit in spots where it's a little more solid. And again, if you um, if you go back, like right in there, it's really starting to do its thing. Um, if you'll go to my YouTube channel, there is a quick little video on, um, and I'll, I'll post it on here, I'll just so that y'all will see. Uh, it's, like I said, it's a quick 20, 30 seconds. But you can, in that one, I get really close to this, uh, this piece, and you can see it literally start to, see, there I go again, literally. You can see it um, start to pull apart, and it, right before the camera. So, and then when it's all said and done, it's all dry. And if, if, if it starts to pull more than what you want it to, and after it's dry, you could always go back and put more paint in. So, like for this one, the, the uh, galvanized bucket that I did, a pot that I did, after it was all dry, I took some uh, drop cloth, which is another uh, neutral color, it's a lighter color, and I uh, lightly dry brushed on top of the sandbar. And it picked up all those, all that rough texture uh, and just gave it another color that was in there, okay? But anyway, that's the, that's the, the process. Um, is there any questions that have not been answered that I can look and see uh, really fast? Whoop. Sorry about that. Um, okay, I don't, I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions. I see some people have used the vinegar water, yay. Don, should you dab some mermaid tail on there and drip it? Oh, true, Christana, yes. I could, I could dab some um, uh, mermaid tail on there and drip that as well. So it, the thing about this is you can just keep on adding until you're totally satisfied with it. Or you just, it is one of the most fun things to do. And if you just play, uh, and you just get to going, something up here unlocks, and you just, creativity takes over. And so, um, and when you say there's no rules and with this, oh, it is freeing. And just, I, I, I revisited the color wheel a couple of years ago. I used to take art, and I totally forgot about it. But I started revisiting that to see what, um, what colors complement each other, and what colors go well beside each other. And, and the more colors, the better. Uh, I just finished a piece uh, last week, and there's eight colors on that. And it's a, it's not a big piece, but I put eight colors on there just because I can. So uh, the more, the better, yeah. So, whoop. Sorry about that, y'all. Hmm. Trying to see trying to see questions that I'm not seeing very many questions. Okay, well, I'm not gonna keep you any longer. I hope that that answered what you needed to see. Uh, I will go back in and answer anything and hopefully uh, the others that have been on here uh, were able to help you as well. So thank you so much for joining me. This was fun to do. Uh, this is like I said, one of my most favorite things that to do and thank you for joining me. So I will um, holler at y'all later. Okay, y'all have a great rest of the week. Uh, it is only Tuesday and uh, we have got lots of creating to do. Uh, before the end of the week. So thank y'all very much. Bye.